Hey, what's up guys? I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and today I'm gonna show you guys how to make this cool concrete lamp that you can put beside your couch, in the corner, wherever you want, by your bed, it doesn't matter. Put it wherever you want. The best part about it is you don't need a ton of tools and if you have the tools, that's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's do it yourself and I'm gonna show you step by step how to create it. And also, you don't have to worry about any soldering. I got you covered. Stay tuned and let's make it happen. Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Everything is just moving so fast it's hard for me to sit back catch a good book and read and speaking of time that's been one of my biggest challenges right now but i still love to consume information and audiobooks seem to be the best choice for me now as you guys know i love to do things myself but i also have to find that extra level of motivation so i'm always looking for things to consume and lately i've been listening to the household hacks by ace mcleod now you can find all sorts of book on audible.com slash diy creators just search for whatever you want if you have any trouble with that they'll give you some recommendation and for you audible is offering a free book of your choice with a 30-day trial membership simply go to audible.com slash diy creators or text diy creators to 500 500 to get started i'm going to place the mark at the halfway point on this eight foot piece of lumber Overall, the build doesn't call for a ton of cutting, so I'm gonna use my miter box to make a lot of these cuts. And to make things efficient, I'm gonna make the first cut at a 45 degree angle, and this will give me two pieces at 45. Now the next thing I have to do is cut a smaller piece that would close off those two ends. And of course, both of the ends are cut at a 45 degree angle as well. Next, I'm gonna cut another piece of lumber down that's gonna be sandwiched between the two pieces that was previously cut. And to give you an idea of where this is going, we're going to put the two larger pieces on the outside, sandwich the smaller lumber in the middle, put the light panel in the front, and then close off the end with this piece. Now as you can see, there is a little bit of play in between the light and the two outer panel. For those without a table saw, I'd say you can leave it like that and it'll be fine. But I have a table saw and I want to make that gap just a little tighter. This does fit a lot better, but I don't think you can go wrong either way. I marked and cut the smaller piece of lumber to the length of the LED cover. I have everything I need at this point, so it's time to glue it up and then clamp it. Now I'm clamping this thing up and I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna attach the miter end? And then it hit me that a couple of weeks ago I created this face clamp attachment. Now although you could use masking tape to hold it in place, the problem with that is you just don't have a way to put pressure on it. So with this clamp, I can now put that miter piece in place and then tighten up this clamp. Nothing like a helping hand, this actually worked out well. The glue is all set, now it's time to give it a quick sand before moving on to the next step. So I wanted to have an opening in the bottom of the concrete form, so I took a juice carton and cut it out so I have an open square. Next, I'm gonna take a piece of foam and cut off a small section. And since the foam got a lot of pockets and cavities in it, I'm gonna take tape and wrap it so that I can close those up. Anything of this nature could also work, whether it's a straw or a piece of hose. Next, I'm gonna take some hot glue to attach this to the inside of the light panel. And I'm gonna allow it to hang beyond the bottom. I'm gonna then cut out a hole inside the carton so I can have the foam to pass through. Before we get into the next step, I now see what I could have done differently. I could have taken this carton, placed that in the bottom of the mold, and then surrounded with hot glue before putting the sides on. Had I done that, I'd been able to seal the perimeter of the box. I'm using plywood with a laminated side, which is actually smooth on the inside. You can also use melamine. Now I wanted to build a form in a way that it was easy to remove the form from the concrete once it was set. I held the box together with clamps just to make sure it all lined up and now I can run a few screws in it. And with this box fully assembled, it's time to put some mold release on the inside. Attaching the juice carton didn't quite work as well as I hoped because one, I didn't cut the box completely square and two, I didn't quite seal it enough so that cement didn't get in it. The ultimate goal here was to have the light housing sit above the juice carton and then this foam piece would slide right down into the juice carton and this way I didn't have to drill it out. Now on the bottom side of the light housing I'm going to drill a few holes and add some screws in it. The screws are going to be in it so that this can be locked inside the concrete. The next challenge is to create a way to keep the light housing upward in a vertical position. And to do so I need to extend the side of the box higher. 
then I'll take scrap wood as a way of supporting the lamp housing in a vertical position. But of course there's a lot of measurements going on because I need to make sure I'm keeping it in the dead center. I first worked on the front to back position so this way I can stop the housing from going one direction. Next I'm going to sit the housing back in place and then attach the other side and this way I can push everything right where I need it to be. In order to make this straight and level I need to first make sure that my work surface is straight and level. And with that out of the way I can now focus on the side to side. Now this was probably the most meticulous part of the project. I also took advantage of this channel by running a few screws in it that you will not see because of the light housing. Now this may not be needed but I did throw a few pieces of this wire mesh in the form so that I can add some extra strength. To create the concrete mix I'm going to use a 2 to 1 ratio where I'm using 1 cup of cement mix and 2 cup of sand. And you'll also need water as well. Whenever you can always try to mix a little more cement than you actually need and this way you don't have to worry about mixing two different batches and trying to blend them. Now once I got the mix all ready and ready to go I can now pour that into the form. Just try to work it down into the bottom first and then I also took a piece of stick and kind of worked that into the corners. Now with the first layer of concrete in place I then took some of the wire mesh and worked it into the form. Now once I got that all seated I can now add more cement mix into it and fill up the form. Now I did find using the stick was really helpful I was able to work the concrete in place and then work it all into the corners. Now I tried my sander but it seemed that the hammer worked a lot better on this project when it came to taking out the bubbles. Now that a couple days have gone by I always get nervous when it comes time to removing the form from the concrete because you just really don't know what to expect I'm just hoping that I got everything right I shook it right I spent enough time getting the bubbles out. I gotta tell you I was super thrilled when I was able to pull the sides off and saw that everything looked good. Now I had every intention to put masking tape in this section this way I can just slice it with a razor and peel it off. Now that didn't quite happen but it's still not the end of the world I just took an old chisel and I was able to scrape this off it took about 5 minutes to remove it. So I'm going to carefully turn over the entire lamp. Make sure you support the wood and then I'm going to slightly knock off the bottom and that came out really nice. If you look close you can kind of see the juice carton and I thought I was going to drill through real quick and just kind of bust through a layer. That didn't quite happen. Somehow cement managed to get all inside the box and that kind of just derailed my plan. Not a big deal we're just going to switch up the way I was planning to do things. I'm going to use a 12 inch masonry bit and I'm going to drill from where I put the foam all the way through to the bottom. One thing I could have done was fill in the first hole with more cement. But it hit me while I'm at this stage I might as well just add a little bit of the LEDs at the bottom to kind of create this glow effect under the lamp. Now the stain selection in my box store is pretty limited so whatever they had it just didn't match what I was looking for. Now I did have some walnut danish oil on hand and I was able to use that because that kind of got me close enough to the tone I was looking for. I applied one coat of it by taking a rag and wiping it on. I wanted to make this lamp as simple and doable as possible for most people so I did find this quick inline power switch that could be used for this lamp and also I'm using some 12 volt LEDs. All you have to do is just plug the power strip in line and then on the other side of that you can plug in your transformer. So first I need to stretch out the roll and get a guesstimate of how long I need this strip to be. The LED strips always have an indication on where you need to cut and it's important to cut at that location. Now to make things easy for me I'm going to take a glow rod and pass that through the hole, tape on the LED and then pull it through. Now with my plans going away from the original idea I was able to find some tall rubber bumpers that was able to provide clearance so that I can pass the power cable. Now with the legs on and in place I wanted to test out my newfound idea. I powered up the LEDs and I checked to see if I got that glow that was under the lamp. It wasn't perfect but it was good enough. I ended up using a total of three screws, one on each end and one in the middle to secure the LED housing. The next thing I had to do was remove the protective paper on the back of the LED and stick the LED in place. 
I started from the top and then I worked my way all the way down to the base. And the next thing was to put the cover on. So I intentionally cut the LED so I had a little bit of slack at the bottom this way I can have some light which would also give me that glow that I was looking for. Now the good thing is the glue is transparent so I can flood this entire section with hot glue and the light will still bleed through. Now what's great about this design is that the LED can easily be replaced in the future by just digging out the hot glue and replacing the entire strip. So let me plug this in and see what this would actually look like. Now since the LED strip came with the DC plug on the end of it, that made it so much easier to just plug in the inline power switch and then plug in the power source. Now once you plug that in, you now have control with this switch. But if you want to step it up a bit, you don't even need this inline power switch. All you need is a transformer, plug that into the light. The lamp will now be controlled by using this smart outlet. These are pretty cool and I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to turn some of your traditional devices into smart devices and can also be controlled with other devices such as Alexa. And if that's not enough, you can talk to your phone and tell it, turn that light on for the boss. So this was a pretty cool build, real simple, but if I could change anything, I would definitely add a second light on the back side of this light to make it even better. And by the way, I'm Glenn. Thanks for stopping by and be sure to subscribe so you never miss another video. I'll catch you guys on the next one.